Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godstock, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Niall Dennehy, who is with us from AidTech. Hi, Niall. How are you? Hey, Zenobia. I'm really great and uh, delighted to be here. Really excited. Thank you very much for the opportunity and a big shout out to all the Hedera community. So thank you. Good, good. Well, thanks for joining us from across the pond. Um, Aid Tech has been around for a while, but is new to the Hedera community. So can you give us just a little bit of background on your organization, you know, why it was started and what your, what your mission is? Yeah, happy to do it. Look, and again, thank you all very much uh, for being here. But um, Zenobia, we, the genesis for Aid Tech comes from the Moroccan desert, believe it or not, all the way back to 2009. So my co-founder, Joseph, who's an amazing guy who had a, his first baby child born today, but um, Joseph Zenobia ran a marathon called the Marathon de Sabla back in 2009. He basically, he raised a big sum of money for charity. We weren't able to see where that money was going. And around 2012, we attended an event in Dublin called the World Humanitarian Summit. A former secretary general of the UN called Ban Ki-moon attended the event and told us that about 30% of aid goes missing every year. So what we did was taking inspiration from the Bitcoin white paper, which was published by Satoshi, there was an element of financial inclusion in that. And we thought the real innovation, to make a long story short, was the traceability and the transparency that that ledger can afford. So we had an idea. We wanted to do a project. We said, let's do it in a really tough to reach area so we can make an impact, make a difference and bring identity to people who don't really do, don't already have it. So we approached um, the Red Cross. We told them there's this new technology out there. We'd love to trial it. And we think an ideal use case is international aid. So we did a project, Zenobia, in a refugee camp. It happened in Lebanon. And we proved that we could send aid over blockchain and we could bring traceability and transparency to the process. We soon realized that there are over a billion people on the planet without any form of digital identity, identity for that matter. And we thought if you combine and you merge digital identity with payments, and if you focus on the value proposition of traceability and transparency, you can create some compelling use cases. And over the years, Zenobia, we've done remittances, we've done welfare, we've done healthcare. We had the first baby born on the blockchain on our platform back in 2018 in Tanzania, in uh, believe it or not. And we're really excited now to bring all of the learnings, all of the enthusiasm, all of the energy, and more importantly, the applications uh, to Hedera. And we're, we're building a really, really, really exciting application in, with Hedera that's focusing on financial inclusion. It's initially going to be rolled out in the Philippines, but we're targeting more broadly Southeast Asia to expand that. And what it is, it's a digital wallet aimed at financial inclusion. And we're partnering with a number of different organizations, including Saved Children, to enable disbursements, which include welfare, payments, remittances, and integration with their local financial um, service providers to really bring financial inclusion. And um, it's been a great experience with Hedera so far. In particular, uh, I'd love to give a quick shout out to Sabrina uh, from the HBAR Foundation, to Aline, those guys have been incredible, particularly uh, Sabrina, and really, really enthusiastic to be part of the Hedera ecosystem and um, really appreciative of the support and love the technology more important. Good, good. Well, I mean, I, you know, I love to hear this. Obviously, um, you know, there are certain use cases that make it so worthwhile and so exciting for us to get up in the morning and continue to do this work. And this is certainly one of them. Um, you shared a lot there. I want to unpack a few things. Um, as a mom, when I hear, you know, the first baby born on the blockchain, I say, wait a minute, what does that mean? Um, can you walk our listeners through that? Cause that seems a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, happy, happy to do it. So, uh, purely by chance is we got connected up with the Dutch NGO, um, through the German government. And we found that again, focusing on the SDGs and the mission that we've been on for a long time. 
Uh, we were alerted to the fact that sustainable development goal target 3.2, which is to increase the health and well-being of newborn mother of, of mothers and their newborn children, and to reduce the rates of neonatal mortality, was something that around the world, when you look at it, was a big problem. And when it came to that Zenobia, what we found was oftentimes it meant that the women who were having babies sometimes in developing countries didn't get the prenatal, the postnatal, the antenatal treatment that they required. And when we looked at developing countries, Tanzania being a point in case, we worked with the German government down there and we found that oftentimes it was a seven, eight hour, sometimes more journey for the women to visit a healthcare clinic to get the entitlements that they needed, things like iron tablets, folic acid, you name it. Um, and what happened was, and this is what we like about Hedera too, and to go off on a tangent, there was literally a ledger sitting on a table that recorded the entitlements that the, the women received as part of their journey. The, pl the problem was that they oftentimes didn't show up on the right day because they didn't have technology in place to alert them before. And so what we did was working together with the healthcare provider, integrating with the solution they already had was create a smart contract, which reminded the women to show up the clinic. They received an SMS to their phone. And what we did then from a, uh, I guess, a data point of view was digitized individual items like the folic acid, like the iron tablets that I talked about, and they were digitized, put on a DLT. And then when the women came with a very basic smart, a basic application on their phones, they were able to confirm that they didn't indeed receive the entitlements that they were supposed to get. And it meant that from start to finish for the nine month journey, the women got what they were supposed to get. And then the babies were hopefully born um, healthily with all of that good information. So you can see why a DLT we took a really old fashioned physical ledger. We digitized the entitlement the ledger itself. And there is a picture up on Twitter with the consent of the mother of that baby. And the really cool thing about that project is that the digital identity that we built is still in place. It was self-sovereign and all of the data associated with that is owned, controlled and managed by the mother and the child. So. That was one of the ones that we're particularly proud of. And I think one of the reasons that Hedera were enthusiastic about working with us. Amazing. Yeah. And, you know, as you may know, our, our, our founders and a lot of our team come from that identity background. And I think this is a problem that people have been trying to solve for ages, right? The ability to give identity to various groups of people, um, but also to make it uh, cost efficient. And, you know, I think there's some uh, multiple sort of themes coming together here, right? In terms of early on in adoption of cryptocurrencies, people thought about, gosh, it's really expensive to do these kinds of things. And, you know, this will exclude people financially. This is really flipping that model on its head and saying, you know, you can include them and you can include them in a way that is so much more holistic than just a, you know, a single piece of their identity. Totally. And taking inspiration in from that work, Zenobia, and what we're doing with Hedera in the Philippines, a lot of the learnings that we put in place when it came to dispersing of the, you know, the folic acid, the iron tablets, etc., those things can equally be applied then to finance. And one of the things that we're going to be doing in the Philippines with Hedera on, the, on, on their DLT is integrating with financial service providers moving stable coins around and opening up additional channels to people on the ground who are in need of financial inclusion, things like welfare, uh, like remittances, like the different financial entitlements that we get. And we've been speaking recently with some amazing introductions from the HBAR Foundation to a government body um, who have around 3 million coconut farmers in Philippines. And what we've been told is that they in effect, through the, the connections they have with the community, affect about 10x that. So 30 million people in the Philippines are in wow. some way connected, affected, or associated with coconut farming. And with Hedera's Guardian uh, initiative, what we're hoping to do is leverage that there from an ESG point of view and, it, and, and capture and include a good chunk of those. So what we're really doing is building on top of the existing Hedera DLT platform that's built bringing a new application to that, which is effectively a wallet that's merging identity with payments. And the vision that we have then is to open that up to broader financial services and creating a link between what is the Filipino peso 
and crypto, which includes stable coins and HBAR. And that is a particularly tricky thing to do at the moment right now, especially with crypto being the media. But one of the reasons that we wanted to work with Lira and we wanted to work in the Philippines is because it's pro crypto right now. And if you look at how the, uh, the Banco Central Philippines views crypto and the applications that are out there, they're quite numerous and plentiful. So we believe that we've got a good landscape. We've got a great jurisdiction and we've got the partnerships to really do something that is scalable, meaningful, impactful, and that leaves a legacy. And that's again, as you say, bringing identity together. And uh, we believe Hedera is going to be um, an ideal platform to help us. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that, you know, most people realize how huge the Philippines is in terms of, you know, it's one of the top countries in terms of population. Um, and it sounds like they have been quite forward thinking in terms of their approach to identity and, you know, sort of embracing the um, crypto in the cryptography sense, um, as well as in the cryptocurrency sense. Yeah, totally. And uh, one of the things that we found from, you know, operating over there um, on the grounds of Nobia are things like integrations with uh, th their local 7-Eleven um, stores, uh, pawn shops, which are quite common over there. But the ability to move money around in the Philippines, the underlying rails with things like uh, with bank, Banknet and Pesonet, um, it's quite a mature ecosystem. And this, the structure that they have there with community banks, uh, the integration of, you know, the card, uh, the card networks, it's an ideal proving ground. And you mentioned, you know, the, the adoption of crypto, things like play to, you know, we've all heard about Axie Infinity, uh, the adoption over there. And I think because that was rightly or wrongly a lifeline for some people during COVID, the perception of crypto, um, generally in the Philippines, we found it to be a pretty friendly place to do it. But I think they do genuinely see that it can make an impact on the lives of people who leverage that. And again, that's the type of use case that we uh, we have been building since 2015 and we want to keep on building. So, um, yeah, all in all, it's going to be um, an amazing opportunity. Fantastic. And Niall, before we wrap up, um, you know, can you just share putting on your uh, technical hat for just a little bit? What has, you know, the development been like on Hedera and what do you all, what should the community look for from you all in the next, say, six to 12 months? Yeah, um, it sounds cliche, Zenobia, but genuinely the support that we've gotten from the foundation has been amazing. Some of the identity experts that we've been speaking with are pretty renowned in their field. They've published papers, blog posts that we've taken inspiration from ever before we got to know the HBAR Foundation. Um, and when it comes to the integration work that we're doing, we found that things that were not even asked for, like architecture diagrams, how we integrate with the DLT and all of the different companies that are available to us and supports documentation has been super comprehensive. Uh, so genuinely, we found that really, really helpful. The onboarding has been super smooth. And when it comes to um, what we're doing, again, expect to see what is initially a wallet, but more broadly, it's going to be a platform to enable people to build uh, financial inclusion in the Philippines is going to be coming at people very shortly. And what we plan on doing then is if you look at the landscape of the Philippines, when it comes to fintech, um, when it comes to e-commerce and when it comes to moving money around, we have some bigger, broader ideas that we will get to once we execute upon the initial milestones to enable things like mini apps to be integrated with other platforms. For example, some of the wallets in the Philippines that are used by telco networks have tens of millions of people out there. And we don't want to bite off more than we can chew, but we are a very optimistic and uh, ambitious company. But expect to see what we build um, as, as being part of other, I guess, ecosystems that have scaled and have tens of millions of people's, uh, people out there. And we believe that we can genuinely make HBAR and Hedera be part of that. So uh, a lot coming at you, but all good stuff. Great stuff. Um, Niall, if people want to learn more about you, where should we point them? Um, you can look up our, our Twitter, which is Aid Technology. Um, our website is AID.technology. They're the two best places to find us. And if you Google Aid Tech, and that's a colon between the aid and the tech, that is where you're going to find all the information that you require. All right. Now, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you will come back and keep us posted on your progress. And um, I personally will be watching this very closely. So thank you so much. We hope so too. Thank you, Zenobia. Hey.